Alright guys, I know you love C3 videos. Well, here's another one. So this is Eric 73 and it is a project. So it needs a lot of reassembly, but there's some good things to it. One, it's a 73, but two, it has a brand new long block in the engine bay, which that will be project number one will be to put the engine all back together and get it to fire up for the first time. So there's a lot of things that needs to happen before that. So we need to put the headers, start from the bottom, we need to put oil in it, we need to put head, the headers, bolt those back up to it, make sure the intake was put on correctly, make sure the valve covers are good, put on the carburetor, put on the serpentine belt system, put on the radiator, plumb everything up, put in the distributor, get it to have spark, get it to you know have fuel, put in the gas tank, all that kind of stuff in order to make the engine run again. But here's a, you know, kind of a general description of the car. I mean, gas tank in there, you know, everything's just piled up on there, but little by little, we will get it to run. So today's project, I think, is we're gonna focus on getting the front accessories put on. I have some power steering stuff and the uh, alternator and all that other kind of good stuff um, ready to go, and we'll put that on. So, little by little, we'll get it done, um, but the goal on this one first is going to be get it to run and drive safely. So, the engine break in, we'll, you know, we'll prime the oil pump, we'll do all that kind of good stuff. Here are a lot of the goodies uh, that came with the car, so the rest of the serpentine belt system. Brand new carburetor, brand new chrome alternator, brand new chrome power steering pump. We have a brand new wiper motor, we have spark plug wires, we have a distributor, we have brake and oil a new starter, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so it should make this install go fairly quickly. I've never actually installed one of these. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, supposedly all the parts are in the box. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. We'll see. One thing that Eric wants to do uh, in this Corvette is he wants to put a new gas tank in it. A uh, new motor, might as well put a new gas tank. This is a powder coated brand new gas tank from Summit Racing. And it looks really, really good. It comes with the gaskets and the lock ring for the sender uh, and all new bolts, which is awesome. And it's all for under 200 bucks. Super, super good value in my opinion. It's better than, you know, hoping and praying that the gas tank that you have pulled out is going to be any good. So we'll put that in and that will be a pretty easy job. Uh, he has the gas tank straps and we'll go from there. Before we go putting the tank up in here, there's a couple lines that need to replace. So there's a, a vent line up in here. There's the main fuel feed line right there, and then I believe another vent hose right there. But luckily, uh, this car came with a bunch of hose, so we can replace those fairly quickly. And that way, when we put the tank in, it won't be that big of a problem. So the quickest way, I kind of showed you guys how to do this, the quickest way once you put the tank up into place, you're going to want to have a bolt with a nut already on it, and there's a, a notch in that one. So basically, you push the tank up, you push this crossbar over, and then lift the other side up. And then it'll all kind of bolt into place, that way you're not fighting both sides at a time, you can do it yourself. That's the easiest way to get it in. Here is the beautiful new tank, all ready to go in. So, little quick tip, put the hoses on that are above... Uh, on the top of the tank first before you put it in so there's this return hose right here which I know that's the correct length because um, I took the old one off um, I have the main feed hose that goes into the bottom center already in the car these hoses over here have also been replaced so um, I think this is 7374 only little vapor canister looking thing um, I had one in my part so we put it on so it's correct and we're ready to go all right, there's the tank all installed. The only thing I don't have is the sender and the cap, which are both coming new, but all the other fuel lines and, you know, vent line and return line or whatever, if you stick your hand up on the other side of the frame next to the fender, you're able to access all of it. So it's not too hard of a job. Um, putting up the tank, it's much easier when it's empty. But um, that's all for today because I don't have any more parts, so we'll get back to it when we have a sender and a gas cap. Alright guys, we're back to working on Eric 73 and it looks a little different than the last time you saw it. So, the issue that I was having before is the car had the wrong water pump on it. And I'll show you the differences between the water pump he had on it, which is stock, and then this one. 
So the main differences are there are mounting tabs or mounting holes here and then one below right here. Then also there's this mounting part right here. The one he had on it didn't have either of those. And without those, none of this serpentine belt stuff is going to work at all. You can see here's the original pump he had on it. So there were no bosses right here for um, for anything. And then up at the top, there wasn't one either. So the only difference is the water outlet for the, the hose is moved to the top instead of here. I think it will work the same. I mean, it shouldn't be a problem. It fit, it fit right on. The mounting were all the same, so I'm not worried about it. But for the most part, we have it done. So that includes putting on the power steering pump, putting on the alternator. Uh, one tip when it comes to working on these serpentine belt systems is you have to line up the pulleys correctly. So there's going to be one small belt that runs power steering, and then one larger belt that runs the water pump and the alternator, and optional AC if that's something that you want. Now, here's a little tip. Um, in order to get this pump and pulley to line up with the one on the balancer, you have to adjust washers on this mount down here that goes to the water pump, which is another extra mount I forgot to mention. So that took a little while to get you know kind of adjusted, but you know that's how it went. And uh, I think well, we're in good shape when it comes to that. So today we're going to do carburetor. Um, I'm going to pull the valve covers and check underneath them just to be sure. Um, maybe a radiator, that kind of thing. Work is coming along on uh, this 73. So uh, in the mail, I'm waiting for the serpentine belts. But in the meantime, there's a lot of stuff I can do. So I have finished the cooling system with the exception of one heater hose, which I will plan on doing today. Uh, and then that will be all the way done. Next, I'm going to work on the oil system. Uh, so I have to prime this motor. Uh, since it's never been run before and there's a couple things I need to do in order to get that ready to go so I need to uh, make sure this oil fitting is connected to this oil line so um, there's no oil leak that way and then I have a priming tool that I'll use uh, for the distributor and I'll run it I'll turn the motor a quarter turn run it turn the motor a quarter turn that way it gets everything lubed up and ready to break in Another thing I want to show you guys is it it takes an extra a little extra amount of work in order to convert a car um, from its original um, intake car you know belt drive system all that kind of stuff to something aftermarket. So for example, um, we're gonna need a new bracket for the um, gas pedal cable. We're gonna need a new run a new fuel line for the uh, carburetor. Um, I believe we're going to have to, since we have a different distributor than what came in the car, we're going to have to mess with that. We're going to have to wire up the electric choke. I mean, there's just all kinds of little nitpicky things that you're going to have to do in order to run something different than what came on the car, but that's not a problem. Um, what else have I already done? Uh, I found a whole bunch of bolts that were loose, so I tightened those up. Um, and we're pretty close, so here soon I'm going to put oil in it and we will prime it and get it ready to go. So this right here is the little oil fitting that's supposed to go in the back of the block. Basically it's just a little uh, part where the uh, this plastic oil line will fit into right here and it will make the gauge work. So that's something very important that we need for break-in and yeah it should work. So we're really close we just need a bunch of little things. All right, step one for pre-oiling this engine is going to be obviously putting the oil in the motor, but also um, since this is a brand new filter, it's smart to fill it with oil and then make sure this seals. You don't want any of that stuff leaking uh, while you're trying to prime it. So we'll do that. Then you should also check the oil pan bolt and just anywhere else you think oil is going to come out. After priming the pump, you can see that there's oil on all the rocker arms. Part of me, I'm sick. That's why I haven't been making videos. But it kind of does make a mess to do this with the um, valve cover off. But it guarantees you that since this is the end of the oil gap, the oil path, that everything inside the motor is good. Uh, I'll have to wipe up a little bit of oil off this back end. But we're good on this side, which means the other side is good as well. And one step closer. <laughs>
not surprised, but this is how it always goes. So inevitably, these wires that go to the starter, they always get burned and melted on either the exhaust or new headers installed. But luckily, it's fairly simple um, to fix it. So since he's going with HEI, there's one wire that we can get rid of. It's this wire with the cloth sheet around it. And that was going from the positive side of the coil to the starter. We won't need that anymore, so that wire can be removed. But what we have to do is we have to repair these other wires. So here's the main uh, power wire that comes fr um, from the starter positive terminal. And you can see somebody's cut it so it goes from a large gauge to a smaller gauge. Not the best idea. And then we have this wire, and this wire again is going from a large gauge to a smaller gauge. Probably shouldn't do that. This is for the S terminal on the solenoid. Basically, when you turn your key, this wire is what activates the solenoid, which activates the starter. And then we have this wire, which is actually a ground wire that's supposed to go uh, to the bell housing. And you know what? It's not. It was just, you know, jumbled in with the rest of them, and it's possible that, you know, somebody could have hooked this up to positive and shorted a lot of crap out. So we're going to fix these, and I have wires from parts cars, which... Um, I couldn't find a big thick red wire, so a big thick orange wire will do the trick. Um, I found a bluish purple wire which will match the purple wire that's supposed to be on the car, and then I have this um, smaller gauge ground wire which will take care of this one. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, you see all these cracks in the insulation and stuff like that. It just it just doesn't look good, and I'm I just can't install a starter using using wiring like this. So we'll take care of that and get that done. There's the old, and here's the beautiful new. So they're all connected the way they're supposed to with heat shrink and everything. Uh, I have them wrapped in electrical tape around here, and I might put one of those plastic sheets over it just because they do go by the headers and they do get kind of warm. But I haven't cut them to length yet. These are obviously going to be way too long, but um, it'll work. So, you know, power wire, S terminal solenoid wire, and the ground wire. And boom. That's how it should be. I mean, it shouldn't be have all those, you know, eight splices in one wire, and the wire shouldn't change sizes.